Hello and welcome. This is W. Murray Bradford, CPA. Now I want to talk to you about your federal income taxes. Particularly, I want to talk about the history of the top tax rate since 1913, because that has substantial meaning today. When the federal income tax was first passed in 1913, the top rate was only 7%. And you can bet they told everyone they'd never have to raise that 7%. But you know the old saying, once you let that camel's nose get under the tent, what happens next? The entire camel gets in there, right? Well, that's what happened here. 1917, presto, top rate, 63%. Of course, there was something else going on in 1917, the war. And war is bad for taxes. Of course, that war ended, and prosperity came back to the country. And the next thing you know, the top rate dropped down to 25%. That was in 1925. And it stayed there until 1932. And in 1932, the top rate jumped to 63%. Of course, then we had the Depression, and depressions are bad for taxes as well. Let's look around at these different rates. 1925, of course, we had the 25% rate. But look what happened in 1952, 92% rate. Imagine that taxpayer. Now, of course, you had to be making a lot of money to be in a 92% tax bracket, but still, 92%. Can you imagine that? The last dollar you made... You gave 92 cents to the federal government. This doesn't even count state. 92 cents to the federal government, and you got to keep 8 cents. I would assume you were not very happy about taxes. What do you think? Look at 1988, 28%. When that was passed, lawmakers told us that they'd never have to raise the rates as long as we lived. And that was true if you live less than one year, because the very next year they raised that rate to 31%. And, of course, then it went up a little bit more. Today, that top rate is 35%, but you can bet it's going up. In fact, we already know it's going up because the Obama administration has said that they're going to repeal the Bush tax cut. So that means the top rate's going to a minimum of 39.6%. But you can expect tax changes, no question. Here's the thing to think about. Let's go back to the 1986 Tax Act. I want to show you what happened to an investment that someone had just because the tax law changed. Let's say that you owned a rental property in 1981 and that you were earning on this rental property 28%. That was your, that was your investment return, like an interest rate. You were earning 28% a year. Now, I know you think that's real high, but in 1981, inflation was running like crazy. In fact, interest rates in 1981 were above 15%. So there were lots of things going on at that particular time. So 28% seemed like a high number, but it wasn't all that high. But anyway, you have this property, you're earning 28%. Lawmakers get together five years later, 1986, and they change the law. They increase the capital gains tax to 28%. The effect on your rental property reduces your rate of return from 28 to 25%. Now let's reduce the top tax rate from 50% to 28%. Most rental properties in those days were a built-in tax shelter. So a tax shelter meant that you had a tax loss that you could write off against your other income, and that meant the government was subsidizing that loss. When you lost that subsidy from 50% to 28%, your rate of return drops from 28% to 17%. Now remember, the only thing that's happening here is what? The tax law is changing. Now let's change the depreciation life from 15 to 27.5 years. Of course, you own this property. That's not affecting your write-off. But what about the buyer? You know, the buyer is looking at this property now and saying, hold it. I'm not going to make 28% on that property. I'm going to make only 14%. So what's the buyer willing to pay? Is he willing to pay full price? Absolutely not. Because of this tax law, well, there's one more thing first. They also passed the passive loss rules. So the 28% rate could easily have dropped to 11% for the new buyer. What's the new buyer going to pay for this property? Well, he's definitely not going to pay 100% like it was beforehand. He's now going to pay like 80%. And that's exactly what happened. Real estate prices dropped just because of a change in the tax law. So you need to pay attention to the tax laws so you know when these things are happening, what they do to your investment portfolio, what they do to your homes, what they do to everything. So here would be the bottom line. Beware of tax law changes. And be especially careful to keep the camel out. See, some of the changes that might come in the future, we got these huge deficits, right? 
So let's say they want to pass a national sales tax. And they say that's only going to be 2%. Well, fine. 2%. The camel's nose is in. What's going to happen next? 10%. Or they're going to pass a value-added tax. Same thing. So if they pass that tax on top of the income tax, this is a problem. So, you know, the, 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 the beauty and the beast of the income tax, at least there, you know how much you're paying each year and you can get a feel for it. By the way, are you self-employed? Or are you a one-owner business or a husband and wife-owned business? Doesn't matter how you operate, S-Corp, C-Corp, proprietorship, whatever, 1099. But if you're, if you're self-employed and you're a one-owner business or a husband and wife-owned business, if you'd like to find some great tax information that we deliver, go to BradfordTaxInstitute.com. It's BradfordTaxInstitute.com. So just write that down and then go over there and check it out. And there's a free trial. You can try it out. Our newsletter's there, the tax reduction letter. And you can try it out for free for, for seven days, and, and it's got great information. It's all annotated to the Internal Revenue Code. That's what we do. We specialize in finding tax money for the self-employed. Thank you very much for being with us. This has been W. Murray Bradford, CPA. On behalf of the Bradford Tax Institute, thank you very much.